we will make a plot of the pressure coefficient variation along the airfoil surface. And the pressure coefficient is a non-dimensionalized pressure. It's defined in the fashion shown over here. It's usually denoted as C sub P. In the numerator is the change from the free stream pressure. That's nothing but a gauge pressure. In the denominator, you have the so-called dynamic pressure. That's half rho V infinity squared. That's a dynamic pressure in the free stream. And um, that's the density, and that's the free stream velocity. I'll define an expression in CFD post corresponding to that, and then I can you know, define a variable from that and then plot it. First step is to define the expression. Go into the Expressions tab and right-click and say New. And I'll call this my CP expression. And I'll right click and say variables pressure. That's a gauge pressure. So we get the numerator. And then let's define the denominator. It's 0.5 times density, which the free stream, uh, actually, it's constant 1.1767. 1 and CFD post keeps us honest with units. So I'll put the units in there times the square of the velocity. I will put that in parentheses. So I will say um, the free stream velocity is 51.45. I need the units. Make sure I have my decimal over there, decimal point close parenthesis, square that, one more close parenthesis, and it shows me, you know, the matching parentheses, and um, cross my fingers and say apply. That's encouraging because it says it's, it's non-dimensional, otherwise I'd have put uh, units over there. Then uh, let me create a variable from that, so I can right-click anywhere and say new, and I'll call the variable my CP. And I'll create it from the expression that I just created. So you can't create the variable directly or create an expression and then you've got to create the variable. And now I can plot that. Um, but for that, I need to also define the airfoil surface as, as a line. It comes in as, you know, as, as a 3D surface because CFD pose brings in everything as, as a three-dimensional object. Um, so I'll go to um, location, and I'll say polyline. And I'll call this my airfoil. And I, I will do this using boundary intersection. And to see what to select here, I will turn off the contours, go to an isometric view, and zoom in here. And the boundary list, I'll select. So I need to deselect far field one. And I'll select lower, and then hold down control, and select upper. That'll help me create, uh, select two surfaces, and say OK. And if I move the cursor over there, it'll show me what that surface is. So it shows that's you know the the airfoil extruded a unit distance, and I have to intersect it with symmetry one. That's the front plane, and say apply. Okay, so that gives me this uh, the surface corresponding to the airfoil. Now I can plot make my, the plot that I want. So I'll say chart. I'll call it CP. And under data series, I have that location now. Along the horizontal axis, I want the distance x. That's a distance uh, from the leading edge to the trailing edge. And along the vertical axis, I want the pressure coefficient. Again, I'll cross my fingers 
and say apply, okay. I had to try this a couple of times. It, uh, there are lots of little things where you can go wrong. And then let me read in the experimental data. So I'll go to data series and say new curve. And now that's from a file. And we've provided this, uh, the experimental data as a CSV file. So get that and put it in an appropriate location. And uh, there, I'm, I'm in the appropriate location. You might have to kind of look around to get to the appropriate location and say open and apply. And you can see they overlap quite well. In fact, it's better to plot the experiment as symbols. Let me do that. So I'll go to line display and for series two, I'll turn off the line and instead use symbols and say apply. You can see, you know, it, it overlaps very well. And usually you will see, if you go to the NASA website, for instance, you will see that the vertical axis is flipped. Um, and we can do that in CFD post if I go to the Y axis and say invert axis. Okay, and the the experimental data is for the upper surface. So you see that the the pressure along the airfoil is um, matches quite well with experiment, and we we saw that the boundary layer doesn't affect the the pressure, um, so it doesn't mean that we are capturing the boundary layer accurately. Um, but that's that's an important part of validation. And you should actually clean up this plot like I showed you in the laminar pipe flow tutorial um, and you know pr make it a nice presentable plot and and this is something you know th this is exciting when you can match with with experiment and make sure you save your project